Imagine if Netflix, YouTube, and Hulu never existed. What would you be watching right now? Would you be watching this? I don't think so. You'd be watching this box right here. A television? On this device, instead of picking what you wanted to watch and when you wanted to watch it, the television would decide all that for you. And instead of watching a single 5 second skippable ad in the beginning, you'd have to watch 5 30 second long unskippable ads. Can you think of anything more annoying? An advertisement right in the middle of your show? I don't know if my parents were being cheap or trying to discourage an unhealthy habit of watching too much TV, but growing up, my parents didn't have cable television at all in the house. Now, in this modern day and age of online content, some of you are living perfectly content lives without cable. I know I am. But you have to understand, in the early 2000s, online video wasn't a thing. Yeah, YouTube was created in 2005, but what did that have? This guy at a zoo? That's lame. So being an early 2000s kid, you had to get your cartoons through the TV. And if your parents didn't pay $65 a month to get cable, then you didn't get the channels with SpongeBob, Jimmy Neutron, or Courage the Cowardly Dog. The only thing you got was this green brother and sister called PBS Kids and whatever these things were. PBS Kids stands for Public Broadcasting Service. Kids. That meant all the shows on PBS Kids were government or privately funded. So the shows on PBS didn't really have any commercials per se, but they did have the same sponsorship ads that would play a message before every show. If you grew up on PBS Kids, then Juicy Juice and where a kid can be a kid is just engraved in your memory. And also, every show would thank you, the viewer, for watching. And I think that's really nice. So, everyone watching this, you're welcome. I'm kind of glad my parents didn't buy cable. Because instead of spending hours of my time watching mindless television, I spent hours of my time watching television with morals and math. Yep, a lot of shows on PBS were either educational or taught you how to be a good person. The shows I'm going to mention had pretty crazy concepts, but the conflicts in each episode were very down-to-earth and slice of life -y, almost like the shows were made for children. Like in Clifford the Big Red Dog. It's a show about this girl's dog who grew up to be the size of a freaking house for no reason except for the fact that the girl loved the dog so much that he grew up to be a monster. So that means if your dog is normal-sized, you don't love it enough and it probably doesn't love you. So yeah, a giant red dog is a pretty weird premise, but the episodes were about everyday things, like this blue dog feels bad that he tore up his owner's sweater, and his friends tell him to just be honest, and he does, and everyone's happy. Or the episode where this new dog moves into town, but he's missing a leg, and then Clifford and his friends have to learn that having three legs still means you can accomplish a lot of things any normal human can do. I mean, dog. And I rate this show a 10 out of 10. Next is Dragon Tales, the show that made dragons kid-friendly. There's Org, he's the biggest, not so brave of heart. There's Cassie, she's so shy, but so very smart. There's Zack and Wheezy, and their tales of fun. Cause you know two heads are better than one. Dragon Tales, Dragon Tales, it's almost time for Dragon Tales. The show was pretty similar to Clifford. The characters would spend an episode learning everyday things like how to do a cartwheel, or they would try to make it rain so they could show their friend what a rainbow looks like. And there was also this grandpa dragon who knew Spanish for some reason. Don't come too close, niños. And that wasn't the weirdest thing on the show, actually. There was also a dragon character in a wheelchair, which just like Clifford is a good character because it teaches kids that disabled people are still people who can accomplish a lot of things. But I think it's a weird combination of two things. A dragon, a mythical beast known for destroying cities, in a wheelchair? If you wanted to stop a dragon from destroying your city, then you just don't install wheelchair ramps anywhere. I should stop talking. I rate the show a 10 out of 10. Now let's talk about Arthur. Here's some fun trivia. Arthur is supposed to be an aardvark. Personally, I don't see it. Basically, it was a show about Arthur and his other furry friends learning lessons, but Arthur tended to tackle more serious subjects than the other two shows. Like, they have episodes where DW hears her parents get in a fight and she worries about them getting a divorce, or the episode where Arthur Falcon punches his little sister, and even having to deal with someone you know getting cancer. What? Cancer? The character gets treatment and lives, by the way. Because it's a kid's show. 10 out of 10. 
Next, let's talk about my favorite show on PBS Kids, Cyber Chase. Cyber Chase, we're moving. We're beating Hacker at his game. Don't come in every time. This show didn't teach kids morals or how to properly treat the disabled. It taught them something far more important. Math. Cyber Chase is set inside a virtual computer world, and this one character named Motherboard was supposed to be the queen slash protector of this world, but she sucks at her job because the villain of the show, Christopher Lloyd, infects her with a virus. So now these three kids have to go on adventures using math principles to thwart the bad guy's plans to save Mommy Board. M motherboard? M motherboard? M mommy? Mom, come back. Mommy, no. We need to save Mommy Board. <laughs> and unlike all the other shows, this show had an overarching story. The kids would always get this close to saving Motherboard, but nothing they did worked. When I was a kid, I always wondered how much longer it would be until they finally saved her. And they never did. The show's been going on for 16 years, and they're still learning new math principles trying to save Motherboard. I think they're at calculus at this point. The show is teaching you slower than an actual school. What kind of a show makes you wait 16 years for a conclusion? Cyber Chase does, and it's one of the best shows ever created. 10 out of 10. One last show I want to bring up is called Caillou. All you need to know about Caillou is that I hate him. Caillou is a four-year-old and a demon. He constantly throws a tantrum whenever he doesn't get his way. Even in his theme song, he mentions how much of a brat he is. Growing up is not so tough, except when I've had enough. And then he's crying like a child. Well, you're gonna have to grow up, Caillou. The world doesn't revolve around you. Now you might be thinking, James, this kid is four years old. Of course he's gonna be a brat. And I agree, but a big problem with Caillou isn't the fact that he's a brat, but it's with his spineless parents. Caillou's mom just lets him get away with everything. Whenever I misbehaved, you know what happened to me? I had to go sit in the timeout corner. You know what happens to Caillou? Nothing! Not once does Caillou ever get punished! It's always his mom just being like, Caillou, what you said wasn't very nice. Now go behave, okay? Zero out of ten with the show with just the humans. I hate it. I just realized that all the shows I mentioned were animated, but there was a lot of non-animated shows that I still watched. But whatever, I could just say that these shows fit the theme of my channel. Or it could make a part two, I can do whatever I want. Now, as a die-hard PBS fanboy, I think I speak for everyone when I say that what PBS was missing was a crossover episode. How hard would it have been for the Clifford people and the Dragon Tales people to coordinate an episode where the three-legged dog finds the dragon scale, he could dig it up out of the sand because dogs like to dig, except this dog wouldn't be that good at digging. And then he would meet up with a wheelchair dragon and they could be best friends. I would have loved that. As much as I'm joking about it, as a kid, I actually really wanted a crossover episode between the shows Clifford and Clifford's Puppy Days, which is another show that follows Clifford before he was interesting, when he was tiny, so before Emily Elizabeth loved him. So there was a bunch of new characters that all knew Clifford when he was little, and the two shows existed in the same universe, so it wouldn't have been that unbelievable for Clifford to visit his childhood home, and then all the other characters who used to call him Small or Squirt would see him now and be like, WOW! WHAT THE F*** HAPPENED TO YOU?! You see, it's funny because it's a kid's show and you wouldn't expect them to say that. I waited patiently for that crossover episode, but it never came. But at least I have fanfiction. George, he wagged his tail and smiled. Clifford, it's so good to see you. He nuzzled him as a greeting. Nice to see you too. It's been over seven years since I last saw you. Yeah, it had, Clifford said happily. George turned his back to the hill. Here I come. There's no quotation marks, by the way. He got ready to tackle him. He punched George off, and they rolled down. Then, when they got to the bottom, George pinned Clifford, who was panting. The three looked at the two of them, who seemed to be having a staring contest. So they decided to go they somewhere else. Both laughed, and Clifford got off of him. He sat down and waited for George to stand up. So, what are we going to do? The red dog said while quickly getting into a playing position. Okay, that's enough.